lying if I told you I knew it was going to be a hit when we made it. We just had very low expectations, and I think if, if I were to give a tip to anybody, if you want to be successful, just lower your expectations. <laughs> if you lower your expectations, you're going to do great. If we could sell $100,000 worth of this stuff, that's a home run. Hey everyone, welcome to the Be Better Podcast. I'm your host, Donald Kelly, and I'm super excited for my guest today. His name is Spencer Jan. Now, Spencer's a friend of mine. I got a chance to connect with him for one of my other podcasts called The Sales Evangelist. And we were talking and one of my friends introduced me to him and he's a creator of an awesome product called Solo Stove. In the pandemic, a lot of people were chilling out in the front yard because they can't get be, can't go inside their friends or family members' house or chilling in a backyard and they're doing a lot more fires and campfires. And we found out about this thing called Solo Stove and I knew about it for a little bit. But anyways, my buddy introduced me to this guy and said, and you know, you should interview him. I connected with the guy and name was Spencer. And next thing you know, Spencer mentioned that he was the co-founder, he and his brother of Solo Stove. And I was like, what? I got one for Christmas in the pandemic and it's absolutely cool. So think about how much of a fan child I was when I got a chance to interview him and hear a story. Hope you enjoy this episode. If this is your first time watching or listening to our podcast, subscribe to it. Tell someone else about it. Would love to help you to improve your life and to be better. Now, as we listen to Spencer's story and how he was able to create this product and the challenge that he went through, see if you can put yourself in that same situation and let's see if we can help you as well. Check it out. Spencer, welcome to the show. Thanks, Donald. Happy to be back and chatting. Well, I'm, I'm looking forward to talking with you. I'm excited to, to connect with you here and to have you share some of your insights um, with our audience, with the community. Um, but Spencer, I bragged about you there in a little bit at the beginning, um, but talk to us a little bit more about what you do right now, though. Yeah, I mean, I guess what's probably more relevant is what I what I did. Uh, I, I started <laughs> um, a company called Solo Stove back in the day. Um, I, we played a lot. I say we, my brother and I kind of were um, partners in crime and in our entrepreneurial adventures. And so we started um, doing a lot of e-commerce and, and that started uh, way back in about 2008 at the height of kind of the financial crisis back then. Um, and through that, we we grew a bunch of different brands. And one of them was Solo Stove, which has um, turned in kind of into a kind of a cult following in terms of the backyard space when it comes to smokeless fire pits. Um, we started out doing camping stoves, but that turned into backyard fire pits. And um, that really took off. And uh, that company we've since exited. Um, and sold it to private equity, had a couple exits, and then it actually went public on the New York Stock Exchange after acquiring some other notable brands like Chubby's Apparel and um, Oru Kayaks, which was which was a Shark Tank company, um, and Isle Paddleboards. And so, what started in our garage with fifteen thousand bucks turned into this behemoth of a company that's now traded on the on the public stock exchange. So <laughs> that's that's kind of what it is. And, and and so it's coming down today. We were just talking before we pressed record, but I've been doing a lot of traveling and hanging out with the family and spending time with my kids and uh, really taking a, a break to kind of reset um, and and think through you know what's really important to me at this time in my life. But but entrepreneurship has been really core and central to my career. Um, for the past decade. You know, that's pretty awesome, man. Congratulations on the success with that. And, um, you know, all of the cool stuff that came along with it. And there's so much that you've learned and experienced from that journey. And I wish we have enough, you know, we had hours and hours to talk about all of that, but maybe we'll listen to listen to that on your audiobook one of these days. Um, <laughs> so I'm speaking it into existence. <laughs> <laughs> um, but let's talk about this, like, you know, from the the situation let me paint this picture again it was back you graduated in 2004 2004 i graduated in 2004 and and so i had some years of work kind of yeah. under my belt working for um working a job um for for a few years before um things really hit the fan in 2008 what kind of work were you in what kind of job so the first job i took was a sales job um, it was yeah, a, there you yeah, go. it was a marketing, <laughs> it was a marketing sales job. And so we sold marketing packages 
to companies and they were i was actually running around china at the time selling them to factories and exporters and yeah. so we were selling them online ads we were selling them um uh, booths at trade shows we were selling them uh prints in uh, trade magazines mm. and so we would try to convince them to market to to foreign buyers which would be people in the us or europe and so that was the first a year and a half of my career and then um, shortly after that, I joined a company that was a sourcing company. And so we, we were, uh, an office in Shanghai, China that sourced a lot of product for people in the U S so helping people find stuff. And, and that was kind of the day job, um, that I had worked a few years going into, um, the financial crisis of 08, which, which for those that are old enough, I don't know, uh, <laughs> who, who's old enough to remember that, but that was a time very much like today. Mm -hmm. where you feel like the sky is falling, everything's falling apart, the economy is in shambles, there's a lot of fear and uncertainty. Um, and that was a really interesting time. And I'm glad that I was able to go through that um, early in my career, right, three years into working and having a job. But to see that, and then to kind of see it go full cycle from, you know, everything's great and dandy and everybody's spending a ton of money to financial crisis, and the world's turned upside down everybody's losing their job, companies are just downsizing, everybody's getting laid off. Um, and then to kind of see that run back up over the last decade, since then, we've been on this crazy bull run My goodness, of a market. Yeah. yeah. And so to be able to see that gives me context to what is going on now. And I feel for those that are young in their career, or maybe just starting to experience what we're going through now, where inflation is going crazy and you know the job market is now kind of entering this area of uncertainty and the real estate market is getting turned upside down with oh the interest goodness. rates and um so there's a lot of uncertainty going on now and um and i can kind of empathize with those feelings of anybody maybe looking to start something or try to navigate their career during a, a period of turmoil like we're in now what when when what happened with that with your last job before you started off on your own did did it uh, did it um, did they relieve you from payroll or did the did the yeah. company fold or what what happened there we we barely stayed afloat and there were many days there was actually one one's one Christmas when I came home and was talking with my boss and he basically said go find another job he says you need to look for another job and not in a mean way but in a supportive way of yeah. this ship is sinking and none of us are going to make it so start looking mm -hmm. and, he, and he said start looking for another job and i told him i said i want to try to make this work let's try to save it let's try to hunker down and do what we can and he said yeah i'm all in for that but realistically i think it's going to sink i mean cash flow yeah. was broken and everything was wrong with the company um, and we just didn't have enough money to keep going. What we did is we downsized, at least on my side for in, in China, I had a team of maybe 20, just under 25 people. We let go everybody, but like four. Wow. That's a we skeleton. Let everybody. Go, yeah. It was almost everyone. And then we downsized the office to this tiny little office. I took a huge pay cut. Um, I, I can't remember what, uh, what the, the percentage, probably a 20, 25% pay cut. And so I was making forty, a little over forty thousand dollars a year. I had to downsize my living quarters in where I was at in China, and um, we really just all hunkered down um, and tried to keep it afloat. And luckily, we did. We made it through. You know, the banks back then were calling in loans, is what yeah. kind of the simplest, sim simple kind of uh, story was. And so we owed a lot to the banks that we borrowed, and we couldn't pay back what we owed. Yeah. And so banks were quick to liquidate companies and say, we'll take what you got and then we'll just shut you down. And it was day by day, we have another $5,000. We have another $10,000 we can give you. If you just wait, I can get you another $15,000. And it was just that living by hour to hour, day by day, asking for grace from the banks. Um, and luckily we pulled through uh, and I was an employee working for this company, but very felt very much an owner or, or part of a, you know, a core team that was trying to get this thing, uh, you know, right sized and, and to stay afloat. Um, and luckily we made it through that period of turmoil. So what then what 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 caused you to leave or what caused a change you, you pulled through and I imagine you, that was like a almost like a. a an MBA in some degree there <laughs> yeah, in crisis management. Yeah. <laughs> My goodness. Probably what you yeah. pulled through from that, but 
you know, what, what happened after that? So what was really interesting was that during that time, while I, I wanted to keep that company afloat, I also felt the need to find security. And so mm -hmm. I started to dabble in other things to try to find a side gig, something that could help me supplement my income. Yeah. And that's where e-commerce kind of came in was during that time. This is a, a, a long story, but I'll try to keep it short. I got invited to a dinner from, at a friend's house and they made donuts fresh oh. hot cinnamon sugar donuts and it would just blew my mind at that time bro you're making and me I hungry. was like the, I was like these are amazing and I want to learn how to make them and so I googled how do you make donuts mm -hmm. and it took me down a rabbit hole that led me to this course of blogging because I went on this site that showed me a recipe of how to create a, a donut or make a donut and it, at the bottom of it said learn how this donut recipe helps me subsidize my income Hmm. And so I went down this rabbit hole of this guy saying, this is a great donut recipe. I make a little bit of money off of it and it helps me supplement my income. You can too. Here's how. And it was this blogging course. And I was like, what? That's how people make money? And this is 08 and I had no exposure to online marketing or blogging. And so I went down this rabbit hole of blogging, which taught me SEO and taught me content building, taught me how to create websites. And that turned into, as I married it with kind of my skills in sourcing products online in China, um, that kind of married and created this opportunity for me to sell stuff online. And so I started dabbling with that while I was trying to keep this ship afloat, um, which was my day job. And um, long story short, my, my side gigs far outpaced what I was making at my day job uh -huh. in in a very short period of time. And I quickly realized I can do this. And I know that there's resources for me to learn. And I, I'm excited by it. I'm passionate about it. I can use my skills that I've learned in China sourcing products, while at the same time, you know, growing my skills in digital marketing and e-commerce and being able to create something substantial. And all of that bloomed into um, what later turned out to be Solo Stove, which you know, I was lucky to exit to private equity for nine figures uh, and be able to, you know, complete that full circle and step away and, and have all my freedom and time back. So like, you know, this is that it's just like, it's crazy to, you know, to, to think like that happened and to hear where that journey began, because I feel some so many people fall right in between that gap, like where the idea comes from the first, well, it's frustrated with the current situation, they have an idea and then the acting on that idea um, but what made you and your brother decide to like, to say we're going to, or, or what made you act? Like, what was your why behind that? Besides yeah. the fact that you wanted to survive, but uh, I feel like there's a little yeah. more beyond that though. Yeah. You know, I think what, what I am grateful for was that 2008 financial crisis. Mm -hmm. Cause that was a real, that was a real kick in the pants, a real wake yeah. up call to, yes, I can work for someone else, but by no doing of my own, I'm in a bad situation because yep. 2008, you know, all of that happening just affected me greatly. And that was nothing of my doing, yet I was suffering from it. And my company that was supposed to protect me and provide me security and stability, they made decisions and took risks that when the financial crisis hit, it hurt us greatly. Mm. And and I thought in my own mind, right, and I was a few years into my job and, of course, um, you know, thought I knew everything. But I was like, if I ran this company differently, I wouldn't have taken those risks and put our, our company in this weird spot where we can barely stay alive and pay the bills. And so I was really thinking in my mind, you know, working for a job, a lot of times you're told it's stability. They give mm -hmm. you health insurance and a, and a paycheck on time every every two weeks. But my experience was very different. And what happened was it made me realize that, you know, my upside when I work for someone is actually pretty capped and my yeah. downside is unlimited because with a snap, n you know, nothing to do with what, what my contribution was or wasn't, the company could go under and I could get laid off. And, and so it felt like the upside was capped and the downside was unlimited. And yeah. as I started to play with stuff online, I realized that the upside was just unlimited. I could work really efficiently and do a lot of, make a lot of good decisions and reap all the benefits and more of that. While my downside was really just capped with my own desire or my own, um, you know, energy to work 
uh, towards building this thing, right? If I stop working, then yeah, I'm not going to do, I'm not going to progress, I'm not going to build, I'm not going to grow or have any income. But I feel like I could control that. I can control how much I work. And so I felt like I now understood how things were and that building my own business was the way forward to be able to work towards stability. And at the very, you know, I'd love to say, oh, I had this grand idea of buying back all my time. And while time was important to me, it was more survival. It was yeah. more, let me get my basic needs met. And what's odd was that this job that I thought I went to college you know, for four years and came out and got this job, I thought that was stability, but it turned out that it wasn't. Um, and so just figuring out that piece of how am I going to, how am I going to build this career that actually, um, you know, provides for me, that was my first and foremost thought was, was just stability. Because I remember doing a budget, a family budget during that time of the downturn, and mm -hmm. more money was going out than was coming in. And I couldn't believe it, <laughs> because we weren't living a lavish lifestyle. But you know, forty some odd thousand dollars doesn't go very far when you have a, a you know a young kid, and you know you got to pay all the bills, and you're the single breadwinner winner for the family. It just doesn't go very far. No way, um, man. And it was surprising to me, and I was just like, something has to happen, and I need to I need to do something about this. I need to change the situation. And for me, entrepreneurship was that door to changing my situation. How did you figure out what your, let's say I'm, I'm listening to this podcast and, and I'm in that boat and I'm like, this is great. I like what I'm hearing, um, but I don't know what to get started. What are some things that I could do to get started when it comes towards, um, you know, entering the entrepreneurship world? Yeah, I think, I think, you, you know, I, it's funny because a lot of people ask me, how do you start a business? I'm like, well, I started one, like, you know. In 2008, I'm not. I'm, I, it's not like I did 30 of these and have figured out a pattern. But anecdotally, for myself, you know what it was was is is finding that area of curiosity where you're willing to go in and dive in deep, not because you want to make money, but because you just are curious about this thing. Because you're, yeah. you, you know, some people call it passion. You can call it curiosity, but you got to get involved in something that you're willing to do for an extended period of time, and. If you're being true to yourself and honest, entrepreneurship is not a path to quick riches. No way. A lot of times early on in the early years, you don't pay yourself anything. You know, you barely stay afloat and it's it's very much famine for the first, you know, few years before you can hopefully have a feast later down the road. And so being able to be involved in something that you're that just excites you, that that gets you to wake up, not because of you know, the car that it's going to allow you to buy, but just because of it, of you know, in and of itself, you know, if it excites you and you're passionate about it and it's, you know, it gives you something else other than um, money uh, and, and fuels, fuels your flame, I think that's the most important thing. And for me, it was e-commerce because this was brand new. I had never learned about this in school. Nobody mentioned anything. I mean, and this is this is way I'm dating myself, but you know, going into college is when I got my first phone, and you know, when I when I graduated, iPhone wasn't even out. You know, it's just th this tech wasn't there when I was in college, and so for me to kind of be exposed to it later on, and then being like, "What? This is an opportunity!" Like nobody showed me this, and I got real <laughs> excited about it. And I imagine maybe real estate's that for some other people, right? Is yeah. I'm actually. I'll be honest, Donald, right now, although I've done e-commerce for the past 10 years, I've actually started to get into real estate, into nice. multifamily syndications and investments and understanding how those work. And to me, it's really exciting. And I'm reading books on on how to do due diligence and all these things. And it's fresh and exciting. And it's, it's not for the money. It's that this thing is new and I'd love to learn about it. Um, but it could be anything, right? And so I think digging into those areas of passion, really exploring what do you enjoy doing and trying different things because you never know if you like it or not, yeah. if you don't try it. Um, and, and you might be surprised. And so I, th I think that's how we stumbled into figuring out what, what we like doing. And what I love about your part there was just like, you start off with, you know, excited about donuts that led to the blog reading, and it was exciting as something you want to learn. And then as a natural byproduct of that, it, it just kept going down a path. So if, if you're just trying to find that quick win, I'm just going to throw something up and be like uh, Kylie Jenner is like, you know, that's, you're probably not going to happen. You're not going to have that yeah. product and be an influencer overnight. 
it takes, and even Kylie wasn't overnight as well. It took time, a lot of stuff's going on in the background, but I love what you share. You, you do your, you put your work in and you see an opportunity, you know, things come later on because I find that people will, if it's good and you're trying to make the world a better place, or if you're doing your passion, people will figure out a way to, to pay you something. <laughs> I don't yeah. know if I'm making sense on that. Like, um, but from even with the podcast, I didn't think there was going to be money from the podcast doing a podcast, but we did a podcast for so long that we became quote unquote experts at podcasts that we produced yeah. for other companies and our sales training company came from that. And it yeah. was just the, you know, we, we, we were going to podcast anyways, because it was fun. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think the way I always think about it is like a runway, right? A plane yeah. trying to take off. And the longer the runway is, the more opportunities you are and the more chance you are giving yourself um, in terms of trying to get this plane off the ground. And so mm. being able to do something for an extended period of time inherently gives you more opportunity to make it work, right? So if 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 you're staying in the game longer than the than 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 the guy next to you or even you know compared to something else that you maybe would do for 3 weeks and then get bored and sick and tired of it, um, you, you know you're going to be able to get your plane off the ground a lot easier if you're if you're able to stick with it for an extended period of time, because there's a lot of factors involved in making a successful entrepreneurship, uh, entrepreneurial experience work. And you don't know when those things are going to hit. You don't know when luck is going to happen. You don't know when, you know, the economic headwinds are going to turn around and suddenly be tailwinds, right? And the longer you can stay in the game, the better, because you're going to expose yourself to those things. You might meet someone, right? You might, you might come across, um, you know, someone on an airplane where you sit next to them and you start having a conversation, you realize they suddenly unlocked your ability to get this plane off the ground. There's just so many things involved in a business that the longer you stay in it, the more chances you'll have for success. And that's why I always, when people ask me, how did you figure out the product? For me, it was never the product. You know what the product was? For me, it was just e-commerce and digital marketing. Just everything online for me was the passion. And so we had sold many different products and Solo Stove was one of them. And it's more of the, it's one that's more well known and from a business standpoint had the most success. But we had sold everything from RV faucets to garden fountains to gardening products to uh, exterior lighting. We sold wire harnesses, we sold uh, fireplace heaters, we sold so many different things online. Uh, I sold beds and mattresses and pillows. What? I sold so many things that it was never about the product. It was always about, I love digital marketing. I love e-commerce. I love all the tools that, you know, it's like, it, 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 it was almost like I going into Home Depot and just loving tools and playing and making things. And less about thinking about I want to build a house or a shed or a dog house or whatever it be. I just love the tools and I love banging on things and seeing how I could make how you know, what does this tool do and what does that tool do? What if I use them together? What does that make? And I didn't care if I was making a dog house or uh, you know, a sandbox. I just was making something. And so for me, it was all these tools that got me excited. And the products were just stuff that I needed to make to sell something. Uh, to kind of complete the circle of e-commerce. Um, and so I was super passionate and still am about e-commerce and everything e-commerce when it comes to the tools and the back end of it and the marketing yeah. side of it. But yeah. So we'll, we'll come down to the last part here of the episode. Um, but you, you tied, you mentioned something there. It wasn't necessarily the product when it did. How did you find out that this was the product? Was it because of a lot of sampling then solo stove? Was, was it just like a bunch of people were just purchasing it or, or what, what made the, yeah, that, I think as the the winning horse. Yeah, I think there's a lot of you know, I'd be I'd be lying if I told you I knew it was going to be a hit when we made it. We just had very low expectations and I think if if I give a tip to anybody, if you want to be successful, just lower your expectations. <laughs> really when you go into <laughs> entrepreneurship, if you lower your expectations, you're going to do great, right? And that's what we did when it came to Solo Stove. We didn't have high hopes. We said if we could sell $100,000 worth of this stuff, that's a home run. And yeah. we set out to do that and we far surpassed it. And every year we sold more than, than the previous and we just couldn't believe it. Um, now, 
you know, we do have, I do have to kind of create the context in that solo stove was a good nine year run, you know, close to a decade worth of creating and selling and marketing and improving and, and building a customer base and taking care of customers and innovating. And so there is a long process involved when it comes to physical products to find something that works and you can't do it overnight. It does take mm -hmm. a long time. And so that sized up against some of the other projects we were running, we started to gravitate towards oh solo stove is a thing that because of x y and z it had all a lot of it checked a lot of the boxes when it came to a product that's not only just doing well but has the potential to do amazing and we started to realize that you know in years five and six and seven when we really got down the road when customers were really telling us um and and latching on to this brand that we created um you know uh, retail stores like rei um, approaching us and wanting to carry the line. And so <laughs> these validations kind of happen along the way for us to then realize, okay, this is, this is, uh, this is it. This is the horse that that's going to win the race. And, and it was so not very easy to know overnight. And I think that's why I say, give yourself as long of a runway as possible, because you never know when that plane's going to take off. Love it, man. I mean, there's so many, we can, so many things we could talk to you about, so many greater insights, but if there's one major piece of advice you'd like to give to someone who is, they're thinking about this, they're looking at the climate right now and they're like, you know, I want to start, I want to try, I want to test out something. Um, and they're, they're not, they, they know that they they could be taking a risk. They are taking a risk, um, but they can get a bet on themselves, so to speak. What's that one piece of advice you'd give them? Yeah, I, I think for me, um, there was a, actually a Casey Neistat video. If, if, if your viewers want to look it up, it's really motivational. And it, was, and, it, and it helped me. It was like a video in 2016. Um, and uh, I can't remember. Let me think of the video. Oh, it was called Follow Your Dreams mm. is what it was by Casey Neistat. And he really lays out the simplistic way of looking at things. If you have a dream and you want to go chase it and you go do it, there's only two outcomes, right? You either achieve it or you die trying. And if you set yourself up to just chase the dream that you want and dedicate your entire life to it, you'll make it. And so it's up to you to figure out if you are that dedicated to, to spend your entire life and give everything you have every day for this dream of yours. And if you, if you can do that, I believe that anybody can achieve their dreams. And if you don't, well, you'll just end up dying. You'll just end up dying trying, and at that point, it really doesn't matter. Um, and I, and I think uh, for anybody who has that big dream out there, you can do it. Just chase after it, dedicate yourself to it, um, and and you'll and you'll hit it for sure. So so go for it. There's there's no better time than than now to start. I love it, man. If folks want to get connected with you, Spencer, and learn from you and some of the things you're doing, I know you have a YouTube channel that you're, you'll be, you know, as, as a project now, you're trying to help young entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneurs, um, not necessarily age young, but entrepreneurs and educate them, right? Is that, yeah. is there, what's the best way for them to go connect with you to learn from you or to? Yeah, they can look at my name, Spencer, you. Spencer Jan on YouTube. I have a little YouTube channel that hopefully I'll I'll uh, continue to add videos and help the entrepreneurial community. Um, you can find me on LinkedIn as well. Just my name, Spencer Jan, and I'm happy to connect with people there. Spencer, I appreciate you coming on the show, man. Thank you so much. Thanks, Donald. That was Spencer Jan. And if you haven't done so already, go ahead and connect with him. Check out Solo Stove. Um, follow him and connect with him on, on YouTube. He is an amazing individual, giving some fantastic advice. And I feel that you could learn a lot from him. When it's all said and done, we bring folks like Spencer on a podcast to inspire you, to motivate you, to give you insights on how you can improve, how you can strive for and accomplish your goals. We want you simply to be better. Thanks so much for watching.